Hey everyone, welcome back to Upside Down Data. Today I want to zoom out a bit and talk about where we might be in the broader market cycle. So a model that I like to look at when thinking in the bigger, more macro picture is the Momentum Bias Indicator or MBI. That's what I'm showing you right here. Talked about this model plenty of times on the channel, but if you're not familiar, it's a momentum model, as the name implies. It's quantifying if the momentum is prevailing to the upside, so that would be above zero, where this white line is, or if the momentum is prevailing to the downside, that would be in the red, below zero. And the MBI will behave differently in different parts of the market cycle. In a bear market, what you'll see is a lot more time spent in the red than in the green, and these attempts to reestablish positive momentum bias that fail, get rejected to the downside, that send you into a new low. You can see that happening here in 2014. See that happening also here in 2018. Multiple failed attempts, reestablish positive momentum bias, setting in a new low. And we also saw that in the 2022 bear market as well, failing to establish positive momentum bias, getting rejected, going down, setting in new lows. But then also coming out of bear markets, there's a distinctive behavior that tends to emerge also. That's where there's this kind of equal oscillation around zero, where you'll go up, you'll come down, you go up, you'll come down, but not getting too extremely far away on either side uh, more often than not, just kind of equally oscillating around zero. And then that leads into the big kind of bull market crescendo, where you really spend a lot more time up in the green than in the red and really just build to that big blow off top. You know, you see that here, see that here, you know, even see that here as well. And so if we're thinking then about where are we in the broader market cycle, if you look at the recent price action, this does not look like bear market behavior, right? You know, the bear market, this is classic bear market behavior all the way through here. But really at this point, when we started going into this big run here, in January, the beginning of the year, that's really when the tone of the MBI started to change. We didn't just immediately get rejected back to the downside like we did back here in 2022. Instead, we got up and we spent a decent amount of time in the green, dipped back below zero for a little bit, then shot right back up into the green. This is looking a heck of a lot more like this oscillation around zero type of behavior, like what we're seeing through here, for example, or even through here, just zoom in a little bit, it's looking an awful lot more like that than it is like bear market behavior. Now this is something I was talking about the entirety of last year, that I was watching this model and I was saying this does not look bullish yet. This still looks like bear market behavior. Then what we've seen is that going into this year that the market has really changed or the tenor of the market has changed. The momentum profile for Bitcoin has become quite different. And you can see that, in fact, the bottom that we had from negative momentum bias was actually all the way back here in the summer of 2022, back in the June um, lows that we saw there. And then even with the FTX collapse back here in November, we had a pretty deep dive, but it wasn't the same level. And so that was a sort of early warning that, hey, negative momentum bias is still prevailing, but it's actually getting weaker as time went on. That's something we talked about as that happened. And then, you know, now here we are off to the races. So what this is suggesting to me is that as long as we see this continuing, right, as long as we can continue to see this kind of behavior continuing, it's giving more and more evidence, in my opinion, that the market is entering that transitionary period where maybe this is the worst of the bear market we're going to see. And if, you know, if we do eventually see new lows, you know, maybe they wouldn't be too much worse than this. And in fact, what we might be end up seeing here is a transition out of the bear market into an accumulation kind of phase, like what we saw, for example, back here in 2015, that might ultimately give way to a bullish reversal down the line. Now, again, this is macro and it's focused. This is a long-term focused analysis right here. It's not saying we're gonna go blasting off the big bull market immediately. It doesn't even necessarily mean we can't go back and revisit the lows. I mean, look what happened back here in 2015. You know, when this big side was accumulation, we went down and actually retested the lows again. Now, you will note though, that being said, that the momentum bias profile is quite different now than it was back here. And so maybe a better comparison would be something like the March 2020 crash, where there could be maybe some surprising event, something that the market doesn't anticipate, that could send us down to not necessarily the exact lows, but close to them. You know, back here in 2015, we got kind of a double dip, kind of a bottom, and then basically retested that level again. Here, we actually saw that again as well, so it was just a big wick 
in that March 2020 crash for going off the races. It would not be unprecedented, historically speaking, to go back and retest these lows once more sometime in the future before ultimately going and putting in this big move to the upside. So that's why I am not someone who's going to be sitting here calling for all new all-time highs this year. There's some people I've been seeing on crypto Twitter who are very confidently saying that there will be, we'll have new all-time highs for Bitcoin by the end of the year. I personally think that that's very premature. And I actually think that even if we do get a, a continuation of this rally off the lows, you know, like we did in 2019, that still doesn't stop us from retesting the lows later on. And so I think we still have to keep that in mind, that in my opinion, the probably most likely paths or my base case is that even if we see appreciable upside from here, that we're going to have to correct at least significantly at some point before we ultimately go and set a new all-time highs. I don't think it's just going to be up only to all new all-time highs from here, like some people are calling. And how deep of a subsequent correction before we can finally go into that bull footing, you know, that's anyone's guess to some degree. It'll really depend probably how the market goes on, how macro markets look, how the stock market looks, if we have a recession, if the stock market falls off a cliff, you know, all those caveats that go into it. My personal base case is I would actually expect this kind of momentum bias action to continue for a while. And that could either look like a slow grind to the upside before going into a big parabolic move like we saw back here in 2016, or it could look something like this. We have kind of move up, big correction down, and then the big final move of the bull market kind of going into the, the, the top. Now this technically wasn't the top, but you know, close enough. Basically this is the big momentum top of the market going into spring of 2021. And then that kind of ultimately gave way into the bear market. I think something like that could play out again. Now, obviously none of this has to happen. This is crypto, anything could happen depending on how things develop. But if I'm just looking from a historical perspective at what's happening, that's kind of my base case. Is I think that sideways chop for a while here might be in order before we ultimately see that big move to the upside. But really, from a long-term perspective, that should only be good news. I mean, when you're in this big parabolic move to the upside, usually what people are thinking at that time is, man, I wish I had accumulated more back here, or, or if only I had more time to accumulate back here. Well, it's very plausible to me that the market is gonna give us more time. But of course, what's ironic is that a lot of times when that would happen, so let's say we do see a pullback down to lower levels, you know, where let's say we do, even if we set it, go up and push up into, let's say the 30Ks or even 40Ks and then move back down um, again and retest some of these lower levels. At that point of retesting those lower levels, a lot of people would probably flip mega bearish, be calling for 10K Bitcoin, 6K Bitcoin, 4K Bitcoin, et cetera, and not take advantage of that opportunity. And that's always the ironic part about markets is that people always will be looking at these levels in hindsight and saying, oh man, I wish I had bought there. But then if they're given the second opportunity to buy there, oftentimes they won't take it because their perspective will have radically differed based on recent price action. So of course, none of that's financial advice. You should make of these data as you will, but that's one of the things that I'm looking at for my long-term outlook on Bitcoin and frankly, the rest of the crypto market is I think right now, the good news is I think that the worst of the bear market could very plausibly be over. And the more that we see data coming in that looks like this, the more confident I become of that. But that doesn't mean that we can't have short-term chop or some pain short-term before moving up. Really, patience is often a virtue in markets. And it might just be the case that we're going to have to wait a bit before we might be able to really see a new bull market start to develop, or at least the full part of a bull market start to take shape. Now, I also wanted to note that this kind of behavior on the momentum bias indicator is not exclusive to Bitcoin. If we look at Ethereum, we're seeing the exact kind of profile playing out with it as well. Had the big kind of bottom on the MBI back here in the lows in the summer of 22. Then Ethereum, you know, going into the merge, you had a big run up, didn't actually set in a new low in the FTX collapse. But really kind of throughout this whole time, we're seeing this kind of bullish behavior on the MBI, or at least the sign of transition out of a bear market into an accumulation range before maybe being able to set in a new leg up down the line. And I'm not showing the other ones here, but if you look at the MBI chart for a lot of different altcoins also, there a lot of them are showing a similar behavior here as well. And so this is all lining up to tell me that this might be a time of transition and not necessarily a time going off to all time highs, which a lot of people are calling for, but certainly a break out of the bear market. And there's still some people who are stuck in the kind of perma bear mindset who just think this is a relief rally going nowhere possible. But the fact that these data are showing up the way they are 
suggests to me that's not as likely. You know, this move here back in the spring of 22, this was a pretty textbook bull trap. This is now starting to look quite a bit different. All right, so I hope you found this analysis useful. I always find it's useful to zoom out and kind of take our focus off of immediate price action, which can be very random, kind of capricious, you know, very uh, punishing if you're really trying to pay too much attention to these intermediate moves that happen just over the past week or two. Instead of zoom out and just say, where might we be heading long term? Should we really be worried or not? Should we just kind of uh, be a little more at peace with the market? And, you know, my opinion is that this is looking a lot more like transition than a continuation of the bear market. So again, not financial advice, you should make of these data as you will. All right, if you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us on Twitter, and also go check out our website, claritydigital.io. That's where I've been to show this chart. We have the MBI and a bunch of other great models available there as well.